Hey, John Godfrey here. Did you hear the story today? I believe it was on the radio about a man that lived over in England, close to Birmingham, England. And uh, one day he walks out of his house and goes and he stays in the woods for 10 years. If you hadn't heard the story, hang on. I want to tell you about this guy and why he left. Okay, I'm back. Okay, imagine, if you will, a guy that marries this pretty young lassie, and uh, they do... Lassie's a word for a lady, from you people that don't have a clue, from you young folks. Anyway, he marries this gal, and all goes real well for three years, and one day, he can't handle it anymore. He leaves home without a word. He goes and he stays in the woods for ten years without a word to anybody. Uh, why? You know what he says? His wife was a nag. <laughs> hey, you know what a nag is? You ever heard of a nag? Have you ever been called a nag? Or you call your wife a nag? Some of you guys are going, yeah, but I ain't going to tell her about it. Hey, I've thought about going off for 10 years. How about you? <laughs> I better shut up. I'm getting in big trouble. Anyway, uh, that's exactly why he left. But that reminded me, the Bible verse, now you just think about it. Sorry, ladies. I know this is picking on you. There's a lot of men that do stuff that make women want to leave and go live in the woods for 10 years as well. But right now, this is just, this is a story about this guy. But in Proverbs 25, 24, it talks about how it's better to live in the corner of a rooftop than to live with a contentious woman. And, and, and then in Proverbs 21, 19, it talks about it's better to go live in the desert than with a quarrelsome woman. So you tell me that uh, Solomon didn't have some problems with, with women. <laughs> he, he wanted to get away from it, too. But listen, folks, seriously. You know, our words really hurt. I mean, my words hurt people. Your words hurt people. A woman can destroy a man just by the way she treats him and the way she talks to him. You know, a lot of times, it's all self-centeredness. It's, it's like you got to have control. There's control freaks, and they just nag and nag and nag, or they drive you crazy unless you just do exactly what they want you to do. And I'll tell you, that works both ways. It works for men, too. So before you make your spouse, and me, too, I know my wife's going to go, you do this to me all the time, which I do sometimes. But, you know, really, we ought to think about this thing. Before we say things and do things over and over again, trying to control people and make them be just like us, and that's what it's all about. We want them under our hand and under our fingertips and under our control. You know, we ought to think about what the Bible said about wanting to go live in, a, in the corner of a rooftop or out in the desert. This poor guy decided he would do exactly what the Bible said. Evidently, he didn't have a good rooftop. And he didn't have a desert, so he went to the woods and he took off. So dare to think about the way we talk to each other. Dare to think about the way you're trying to control somebody all the time. I have no desire to control anybody. I'll, I'll be honest with you on that. But I don't want to be controlled either. And anybody that knows me real well will tell you that I'm not very good at being controlled. So anyway, most of us don't want to be controlled. Try to use your, your uh, words to uplift each other as much as possible. I need to. You need to. And don't be a nag. See you later. Love you all. Bye.